Hello and welcome to my video. In this video I will discuss the possible scientific basis for ESP and telepathy. And in another video I will discuss the scientific evidence that we have from the experiments which have been done by parapsychologists. Many are claiming that there is no scientific basis for telepathy and more generally for ESP. But these claims are made on a premise of materialism is all that there is. That everything, including mind and consciousness, arise out of the brain as emergent properties. Most scientists are denying any non-physical reality. However, modern physics is calling materialism into question and is pointing to Plato's view that ideas are behind the appearances. The strong scientific basis that supports telepathy, in my opinion, is the very evidence we have in modern physics of quantum entanglement and which I will try to explain as well as I can because I am not a physicist and then I will explain how I believe it can be evidence for a non-physical reality. Why we see this phenomenon is not understood by physicists and I believe cannot be understood by a materialism only world view. Quantum entanglement is a phenomenon seen in the microscopic world when two or more subatomic particles are generated or made to interact. They become connected in such a way that the properties of one particle cannot be described independently of all the other particles even though they may have subsequently travelled a large distance apart. So we have to describe all of the particles together as a system. All the particles exist as if they all possess all of the possible properties that they could have all at the same time, a condition which physicists call superposition. So for the sake of an illustration, let's say that there is such a property that a particle may have as a blue colour and a yellow colour. We interact the particles so that they become entangled. Before an observation or measurement, the two entangled particles will both have the properties of blue and yellow at the same time time. But when we make an observation of say yellow colour in one of the particles then the other entangled particle even if it is at a great distance away will instantly take on the blue colour so that when it is observed it shows a blue colour. When the measurement is made the entanglement is broken and the superposition of being both blue green, and yellow at the same time is lost. The particles will henceforth be defined independently of one another as a blue particle and a yellow particle. Einstein didn't like this and called it spooky action at a distance. Of course he thought only in physical terms however the phenomenon much as Einstein disliked it, has been shown to be true by many experiments since it was first observed. I have asked several physicists, a few claim that it is well understood mathematically and claim that they don't need to understand how it works in the physical world, that that then becomes interpretation of the math. Most physicists say we don't fully understand it yet, but 
they try to propose an answer in physical terms. So they talk about information appears to travel faster than light and they try to introduce a possible particle which would be able to travel at an infinite speed in order to connect the two particles and thus pass information from one particle to the other. I am proposing something very different. If we accept that there is a non-physical reality, which is the realm of information and ideas, then we can explain entanglement. When two or more particles are generated or interacted, then they will share a common information set in the non-physical realm which describes all the possible properties that the individual particles may display if observed. Having a common information set then is the nature of entanglement. So if we ask to observe a particular property in one particle, then we see that that particle displays the property we chose to observe and at the same time, the other particle, when measured, will display the complementary property. So the description is now lost because the information in the non-physical realm from then on only describes individual particles. My view of a non-physical reality is rejected by most mainstream scientists. There are, however, some theoretical physicists and mathematicians who believe that there is a non-physical reality, but they see it as the realm of mathematics only. If we first consider that this non-physical realm is the one mind or the mind of the Supreme Being, God, and that secondly, it is within this one mind that all of creation is brought into existence by upholding the information that describes all aspects of creation in the divine consciousness. This is also consistent with the view in physics that the universe may be a simulation or a hologram. The only way that I differ from the holographic universe of the physicists is that the physicists want to say that the information that create the hologram is in the physical level. Whereas I am saying the information that creates the hologram is in the mind, in some sense in another location. We just can't perceive of a non-physical realm, so we can't really understand it. But as there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the one mind and everything in creation, then in some sense the physicist's view is not different. Once we accept the non-physical reality, we have a basis for telepathy and ESP in general. There is no mind-to-mind -mind communication as is being proposed. This is being put forward by sceptics in order to find grounds to reject it because they don't like anything other than the material. So what I am suggesting is that people who are related or who are relating in the present moment will share like a common information set. Related people can share information because they have a mental entanglement. 
And it is through this mental entanglement that one can present an idea mentally so that the other related person can perceive it mentally. This is, of course, none other than telepathy. Nothing travels from one to the other. It simply means that two related people can perceive the same information in the mind, even at a large distance apart. In the case of ESP, on a general level, entanglement exists because the creation is born in and exists in the one mind. So as I mentioned earlier, there is a one-to-one -one relationship or there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between every aspect of the creation and the one mind, the non-physical realm of information. This means that on a fundamental level, everything is interrelated. Any conscious being, as an observer, can observe the basic creation, including the forms of all sentient beings, but they cannot, from that level, perceive the thoughts, the communication between other conscious beings who are unrelated to them. So we can call forth out of the great void, which is the potentiality within the one mind of all ideas, that is, all information that pertains to the physical realm. I suggest this is what is known as remote viewing. We have the evidence from physics which says that every material thing is really information. And information is available to distant related particles. The physicists are trying to call the information physical. But this poses a problem because information comes from an intelligent mind. To address this problem, some scientists hypothesize that the holographic universe is the result of all our combined minds. This is solipsism. But they have a problem here too because they say that the minds are emergent out of the complexity of a brain. So they claim that at least one brain exists somewhere disembodied in a jar thinking the universe into existence. It's a ridiculous notion. The only way that we can have an objective external physical universe in which we all participate is if there is an intelligent supreme being who brings the universe into being in the mind of the supreme being and brings the universe into being by upholding all information needed to bring everything into existence in the divine consciousness. Thus we have a basis for ESP because everything in the universe at a fundamental level is interrelated. And we have a basis for telepathy because related people share a common mindset or entanglement which is born out of relationship. Telepathic capability depends on the degree of relationship, whether trivial, moderate or strong. So twins will be more entangled than family members and other relatives. Most relatives will be more entangled than most friends and friends and work associates will be more entangled than people that are seen or known casually. To sum up, entanglement is possible when there is one underlying reality of information, which of course would be non-physical. I have called this common non-physical reality the one mind. 
My interpretation of modern physics and entanglement is as valid an interpretation as any other, if not more so, because it explains the evidence without having to introduce any magical particles. The research is showing that everything is based on information and the rules that govern that information. Scientists are not happy with the idea of God because they say they would need to know where God came from and what God is. However, they are quite happy to talk about consciousness existing everywhere without needing to know where it came from or assuming it is the collective of all sentient beings. However, no one can define consciousness nor knows where it came from. So all this talk is just about how we define our starting position. Information, which is also governed by rules, has to come from some universal consciousness and intelligence, which we have to admit we don't know and maybe we'll never know. So here again, my interpretation is just as valid as theirs. So there is a possible scientific basis for telepathy and ESP. Thank you for viewing my video. I'll see you in the next video.